Hello. If you've been watching my past few videos, you know my whole life update that I'm moving back to England because I moved to Australia about eight or nine months ago thinking that this was the place for me and that I wanted to spend the rest of my life here. I wanted to make a base. I wanted to get a home and just kind of build my roots in Australia. But I realized that actually Cornwall is my home and I'm very excited. Me and Jessie are both going back together, obviously. And this is going to be my last Australian a vlog for a very long time. I think next time I'll be back in Australia might be in a couple years because obviously I have family here and I'm a citizen. Jesse got his visa so we will be able to come back to Australia much easier because of the visa. Yeah so this is gonna be my last Australia vlog and I thought why not bring you guys along and we can just hang out and just soak it all in and I'm just trying to embrace every moment and I'm just so grateful that I had this time here and that it wasn't a waste of time. And I want that to be a lesson to you if you feel like you want to change your mind on something or you thought you wanted to do one thing but you've realised actually I want to do something else. Like that's okay and you haven't wasted time in maybe doing something that isn't your path in life. That it was meant to happen and without it happening you wouldn't realise what you want now. So yeah that's what I've discovered and I'm just so grateful that I've had this time here and I've met so many amazing people and I've bonded with family and new friends and it's just been so lovely and me and Jessie have made so many amazing memories here it gets me emotional thinking about it. We have sold our car because obviously we're moving back to England but today luckily we have my cousin's car that we can borrow for the day so me and Jessie are going to Newcastle which is like the closest town and Jesse bought a surfboard because it's a small car it's a tiny little car and Jesse's got his little short board there and it fits perfectly but I just think I'm okay not surfing I just want to chill on the beach go for a walk like and chat to you guys I can't wait to get on the road again I can't wait to get on the road again goodbye Australia we're going to England we're, we're gonna drive to England we're not doing that everyone said you know like oh this is such a shock like why are you moving back like it's cold in England it's way better in Australia and I do agree in some ways like Australia as a country is beautiful and I absolutely love it like that's not gonna change Australia is just so far from the rest of the world it feels so isolated it's just a mission to get anywhere else in the world and travel and see your other family and friends like it's a very isolating part of the world. If you're wanting to come visit Australia, like definitely do. It is amazing and you're not going to regret it. Only now is it like the perfect temperature and this is autumn. So if you come to Australia, definitely come in March and April. Don't come in January, February or even December. Like that is just too insanely hot and you can't do anything. And you just have to like stay indoors, which is crazy because you think, oh, I'm going to be outside all the time. No, the sun is so strong and it's like deadly that you don't even want to go outside. So yeah, that didn't really work out. I thought I'd be outside all the time, but I was actually more inside, which is funny, isn't it? It's like one lesson that I've learned from coming to Australia and now going back to England. I've realized that things change and people change and situations change like everything is constantly changing life never stays the same and coming to Australia I had all of these expectations and also I thought that it was going to be the same as it was last time I was here say with dynamics of relationships with people and family and friends but I realized that I've grown as a person and that everyone else has gone through life and that when you go back to a place it won't be the same people might have changed hopefully you would have changed for the better like yeah what I'm trying to say is that coming to Australia and like even now that we're going back to England I have to keep telling myself that 
things aren't going to be the same, you know, people might have changed, like I might not get along with everyone or I might get along better with other people that I might not have expected, which is good, like I know that things are changing for the better but I've just got to keep reminding myself that I can't hold expectations because when you expect something and it doesn't go your way, that's when you feel sad or upset or frustrated because you had this wild expectation. So yeah, that was like a big thing coming here. I realized things are changing, everyone changes. Like coming here, I've bonded so much with my little sister and that means the world to me because growing up, I always found her annoying, like as a sibling, she was just so annoying and I didn't get on with her and there was just such a big age gap. But now that I've come back to Australia and things are different, she's older, I'm older, and we just bonded so much and I'm so grateful for that and it's just an example of how you know relationships can change for the better and that coming here I've really bonded with my little sister and we do stuff that we enjoy together like go surfing or skateboarding and that's so cool because if you told me that like a few years ago I'd be like hell no I think I do all that with my little sister but now I do and I'm just like so happy yeah going back to Cornwall I don't know what to expect I'm just gonna keep an open mind but I know that things are gonna be for the best and that things might have changed but for the best I'm hoping so yeah that's just a little like lesson that I've learned maybe you can take away from it maybe you're moving back somewhere that you used to live like going back to your hometown or you're moving somewhere and yeah things change and don't expect I think having expectations can kind of kill your happiness. That's all I wanted to say. Oh no, no, no. I've got to pack my bags and look at it. It's just a pile of clothes. There is no organization in this. So I go in a week to England and I just thought, I'm gonna pack now. I know I've got a week but I'm just gonna do a practice run through, like see how much my suitcase weighs now and see if I have to get rid of anything. I feel like I will have to get rid of a few things because obviously I thought I was moving here so I started accumulating more and more stuff and clothes and now that we're going back, I have to limit myself to like 23 kilos. <sighs> I was gonna try and sell like a load of clothes but there's not enough time, I've got a week. like. It takes time to sell stuff on like Depop, so I can't do that, so that's out of the question. So you can see my suitcase, it is a lovely purple colour and it's got butterflies all over it. I didn't choose this suitcase, the suitcase chose me. Do any of your parents buy you something that isn't quite your style but you accept it because it was a gift? Anyway, yeah, that's what happened to me. My mum got me this. I'd say it's a bit young for me, but I just haven't put money aside to buy myself a new bougie suitcase. So I just have to put up with this. And it is very humbling going through the airport with a butterfly suitcase. Yeah, do any of your parents get you gifts that maybe aren't quite what you were hoping for? This is running out. Why would I pack this? I thought they'd be cute to put on the tree like in England, that'd be so cute, like a little reminder of our Australian life, but is it necessary? I don't know, that's the maybe pile. Okay, I gotta fit all of this and more stuff. I've got just bits like dotted around. This is so messy and I gotta fit it all in here. What's really funny is I remember doing this when I was a young girl, like Obviously, my mum was in Australia, so every summer holidays, I would come to Australia to see my family and my mum. About a week before my holiday, or even like two weeks before I had to fly out to Australia, like, I would pack my bags. Like, it was the only thing going for me it is, as a young child and teen, was like, oh, I'm going to Australia. So I would pack my bags like two weeks prior and just have the suitcase like sitting there, ready to go. Like, I was so prepared and now it's a week before and I'm still doing this and it's kind of like nostalgic for me to like pack way before I have to leave. I would actually travel to Australia by myself. I had a weird upbringing as a kid, it wasn't normal, like there's a lot of kids that have divorced parents right and you go to your 
dad's house on the weekends or you see your mum on the other week like you switch weeks you just drive i don't know not that far to go see your other parent well for me it was a different story and i would have to take like the whole of my summer holidays off to go see my mum and <laughs> get dropped off at the airport take a day on the plane and then i will arrive in australia and see my mum like it was a crazy commute to see my mum every year but it was like much needed and i loved obviously seeing my family over here and it was just like the highlight of my life and i definitely enjoyed it and i would fly with my dad when i was really young because i moved over to england when i was about five years old but then i got old enough to go by myself and have like an air hostess take me onto the plane and like i'd be attached to her and she'd look after me and all this stuff and it was actually really nice and i felt very independent like it was pretty cool but whenever i told my friends or whenever someone found out that i would fly to australia by myself they'll be like what the hell that's crazy like that's such a long flight and you do it by yourself and i was like yeah i get i get the plane by myself and i was like nine years old say my dad would drop me off at the airport but they drop you off in this room in this like kids room where there's like tvs and like games and stuff and it keeps you just occupied um while your parent has to like sign documents to say like give my child away to the air hostess who will then like see my mum at the other side and i remember having like a thing around my neck and i'd have my passport and all my documents and i'd have it on me and we'd even get those like little airport buggy things like to the different terminals it was great like i loved it i felt like a freaking vip and i'd also be with like old people as well because they would need assistance getting on the plane and stuff so it's just like me some other like random kids traveling by themselves doing the same thing as me and older people who were like disabled or just needed help to get on the plane it was a vibe and they were so lovely i remember like they'd be like are you okay do you need anything and i'd be like i can have some chocolate please <laughs> and they'd be like yeah sure darling and they just get me like Kit Kat and I'd be so happy and one time I got to fly first class for free and I'm gonna tell you how okay so I was leaving Australia and whenever I left Australia I'd be so sad and upset and confused as a child and a young teen being like why do I have to go back like I love it here and I'd cry and it would be really hard to leave my mum and then fly back to England but there was one time when I just broke down on the plane. I was constantly crying. The air hostess couldn't calm me down. I was like, I want to get off the plane. Like, I don't want to go back to England. Like, I want to stay here. So I was actually holding up the plane. Like, the pilot did not take off because he was like, there's a crazy kid on board. We need to get her off or get her to call her mum or something. So the air hostess called my mum and I was like, mum, I don't want to be here. Like, I want to stay with you. And she's like, no, you have to go back to your dad and she calmed me down and it was all sad and i think my mom got very upset because it was hard to hear her like her child cry i don't know why i'm getting so emotional okay this is meant to be a fun story okay and then the air hostess is like look i know i'll stop you from crying we've got a spare seat in first class that you can go on to hong kong or wherever the stopover is and i was like okay and i was fine after that i was like in the freaking seat like this and as a kid like everything is way bigger because you're smaller so i was in first class and i was like whoa like in my own pod and i had the telly and i was just i felt like a princess and i was just loving life i was like this is meant for me i wiped away my tears i was like take me to england i don't care and i think i watched like cats and dogs or something on the plane i don't know but i just remember it being so much fun and i was just watching telly like lying down just like can you imagine me as like i don't know how old i was maybe like 10 or younger i was probably younger and i'm just like just in first class with all these other like adults being like what the fuck is this girl doing but i got first class for free so next time if you're on a flight and you're like i want to upgrade for free just have a mental breakdown. Hold up the plane, say, I, actually they'd probably just kick you off being an adult, but I think you should do it next time. Okay, I feel like I can't multitask, pack and talk. So I'm gonna do a bit of packing now and then I'll check in with you in a bit. 
It's been like an hour. I just had some food because I needed a break. And Jesse is now going to pack his bag. So he's got a big suitcase and a little suitcase. But Jesse literally has like no clothes. He might have like two or three outfits. I'm not joking. So his suitcase is mainly filled up with my stuff, which is like electronics, cameras, tripods, like a towel, changing robe, just like the big bulky stuff. So I'm very grateful for Jesse. Not having many clothes right now because that means I can fill up his suitcase too. But I just um, weighed my bag and it's like a kilo over, just one kilo over, which is so annoying. It's like so close yet so far. And I forgot, I didn't pack all my chargers, but they add up, don't they? Look how cute this is, we're camping. Yeah. And I'll except, except we're not camping, we're living like this. <laughs> I've got to be honest though, we have got the option to sleep in a bedroom. Yeah, but... We have a bedroom, like a room that we can sleep in, but it's just, the house is just so loud. We just never get a good night's sleep. I'm currently reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, I just started it. From my previous videos I was talking about finances and that I'm getting into like finance books and one of you recommended Rich Dad Poor Dad and I've been seeing it all over online and stuff and jesse has been talking about it so I was like I'm gonna buy it and we did it and it's really good so far so thank you Hannah for recommending me this book okay good night good morning this is what our tent looks like <laughs> well, we put our pool in on it because it's starting to drizzle Anyway, I had a bit of a line. I woke up at like nine o'clock and now it's 10 because I was reading Rich Dad Poor Dad. I'm obsessed. It's so good and I'm learning so much about it. We've only got a few days, like what's today? Friday. We've got four more days in Australia and I think I'm going to end the vlog here because I want to film my travels and also when I get back to England. So next week's vlog I'm gonna be in England, which is crazy to me, but I'm so excited. So definitely stick around for next week's vlog. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on that video. And thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so much for following along on my Australia journey. It's been wild and it's done a complete 180 and now we're heading back home. But I'm so grateful that we've come here. I've had so much fun and I can't wait to see what Cornwall has to offer for us and what our life will look like once we get there. So yeah, I'm very excited and um, I hope you all have a lovely weekend or week. I'll see you in England. Okay, bye.